Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Murray and I'm coming to you with a brief video on how to do the laws of logarithms lab. Okay, so I made this video uh, because today's Google Meet session definitely did not go as planned. Uh, some very frustrating tech issues that have now fortunately been resolved. Um, however, I would like to do a brief video where I'm going to walk through again the instructions behind the lab and how to do the lab report, okay? Including one example that I'm gonna do. So what I'm looking at right now is in the classroom, okay? So I start in the stream, I went to the classwork, and I came down to, and this might be in a different place later on, but all you wanna do is look for the laws of logarithms lab, okay? So there's three important attachments here. The, this description document, which describes what you need to do, the lab report, which you're going to get a blank copy of and which you're going to fill out and submit, and a link. Now, this link takes you to the manipulative that you're going to need for this activity. So just like how the light bulb lab, I had a little website to help you explore it. I have the same thing for this lab as well. Okay, so I'm going to start by briefly talking about the description. Okay, so the idea is we've had some time to look at logarithmic functions. And so we're going to, just like with the laws of exponents, see if there's laws of logarithms that are based on those laws of exponents. So what we're going to do is there's going to be a set of options. We're going to choose our favorite base from a number of options. And you're only going to be able to choose the base once because we want to see if this works no matter what base you use and no matter what numbers you use. The more we can generalize the rule, the more useful it's going to be. My website's going to generate two random sample numbers and two log values based on those sample numbers. It's also going to generate five seemingly random expressions whose values you do not know. And it's going to be your job to figure them out. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take the given values and you're going to copy them into the lab report. You're going to notice that the table on the website looks exactly the same as the table on the lab report. Okay, using the built-in calculator or another calculator on the web, you're gonna fill in the entire values column. All right, and then you're gonna verbally describe how to use the given log values to find the value that you've just discovered using the calculator. And it can either be involve both values, it could involve one value, it could involve addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, okay? You're gonna do four experiments, and then you're gonna answer these extension questions at the end, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna show you an example of what you wanna do. First thing, you're gonna to wanna to take your name. You need to change this. I don't wanna see name, okay? Got to, and, and please get rid of the brackets. Type your full name. So I'd type Mr. Moray. Nope. I would type Mr. Moray. Okay. The full date, whatever date it is. So today is 10 14 2020. The teacher and the class. Okay. So you get the idea. Um, for the class, we would do course 3 CP. All right. And you're going to do your lab title. Again, it needs to be creative and it needs to be different from the lab title to get full credit on that. All right, so now to fill in the results, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come to this, now this is the laws of logarithms lab utility. Okay, again, this is linked to in the project description. What you want to do is you want to do this. So you're gonna see where it says select. Here's where you're gonna choose your log. So originally, I have every single option, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna choose three, that's my personal choice. You choose whatever you want. So I choose three. Now you're gonna notice 16 and eight are two numbers, they were chosen randomly. Those numbers do not really matter. Now, if there's a high probability that you're going to get these numbers more than once, that's actually really, really helpful. It doesn't matter you know, and in a sense, like I said, it will actually show you if the patterns are going to work no matter what the base is and what the number is, right? So if we see the same patterns happening with the same number in different bases, that's a good sign. So you can see, right, I'm going to try to do a little side by side here. So you can see this table is empty. 
okay? This table has been filled in. See, there's now values here that are bold. See, these are empty here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill my table. So this value is 16. Okay, then the next one is eight. Okay, now given log one, what's that? So I look underneath where it says given log one, it's log. Now to do a base, you're gonna hold down command or control, whatever your keyboard is, and you're gonna press the comma, which is next to the M, and it will go down like that. So log base three of 16. And then here I'm gonna copy in that value of log base three, uh, log base three of 16. 2.524 okay and then i'm going to just do a life hack copy paste oh try it again copy paste okay paste it right in there but what that lets me do is it lets me keep the the base of the log so i don't have to worry about that subscript over and over again making it go down like that and see now that's all you do you copy it and just like that uh, it would be nice if you can maybe try to center this um, if you can. I know it's not centered by default, but if you can try to make it look nice, that'd be great. All right, now we're going to copy the given value. So all of these logs need to be copied over. So I'm able to actually just copy and paste it over. If you're not able to, that's okay as well. Just take one of these logs. And I don't know why Google keeps knocking it off to the side like that. I think it's because I'm probably zoomed in and we're just going to copy them in. So the first given log is log base three of 128. Okay, then I have base of two, base of 64, base of 512, and base of 4096. Okay, so you can now see if I pull zoom out, okay, I'm just going to close this. Okay, so what you can see if you look carefully is, I don't know why it's giving me problems in the zoom. What you can see carefully is that I've now taken the table from willnot.fail, which is on the left, and I've copied in every single number that was provided for me. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Okay, if it was in the table and it was left blank in the lab report, I'm filling it in exactly as will not dot fail says. Okay, it's as simple as that. All right, now I need to calculate these values. So to calculate them, I'm going to use my will not dot fail log calculator. Okay, it's really, really helpful. And you can use another internet based calculator if you want, but you're not required to. Okay, so here I go. So to do the calculator, I need to do the log base three of 128. So look down here, I'm gonna enter three and 128. I'm gonna hit calculate. Okay, and now my number's been calculated. I'm gonna write it in there. Okay, now I'm gonna do log base three of two, 0 0.631. Now, since class, I have updated this so if you hit enter, it should not send you back and reset the base, okay? So don't worry about that. That should be fixed. But again, don't try not to hit enter, and I think you should be able to avoid that. So I do 64, and I get 3.786. Then I do 512, and that's all you're doing. You're just putting the number in there, and the system is calculating it for you. What the values are, don't really matter right now. What I more want to know is how they're related to each other. Okay. All right. So here are my log values. So now this is my table. It looks like this. Okay. My last step is to take a look at the given values and determine how I can take these, how I can combine them using addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. It doesn't have to be both numbers. It could just involve one and how I can use those numbers to create these numbers right here. So for example, what I noticed is if you take 2.524 and you add 1.893, 
what you end up with is 4.417. So I noticed that I could add the given logs together. That's an example of a verbal description. Okay, these are our field notes because once we do this experiment, right, we're gonna pull back and we're gonna do experiment two, three, and four, and we're gonna do the exact same process and see whether the descriptions, there's anything we notice about those descriptions. All right, and then when you're ready to go on and please make sure everything's copied down, all the givens are copied down before you do this, you can hit reset the base and it will take you back to this screen. Now notice that not option three has disappeared, so I'm not gonna be able to choose three again. So please make sure you've copied down all that data. So maybe next I choose six, it generates another set of data, and now you can see, again, I come down to experiment two, you can see there's a bunch of things in bold that I now need to fill in, right? Things that are blank on the right-hand side, but not on the left. All right, and then the same thing, I'm gonna calculate the values, right? See these values that were not told to me using the calculator, and I'm gonna do that for experiment three and experiment four. Those are all gonna play out the same. Once I'm done, I'm gonna go back to my observations, I'm gonna go back to my what I've found, I'm gonna go back to what I've written down um, in my verbal descriptions, and I'm gonna to try to answer these questions, okay? So what do you notice about the big number when it was the product of the sample numbers? So for example, what did you notice about um, this number, right? Because 128 is when you, it's the product. Two is the quotient, 16 divided by eight, right? 64 is eight squared. 512 is eight cubed. 4096 is eight to the fourth. So what's the connection between those different things and what value you get for the logs. That's what we're trying to discover, folks. Those are the law of logs. Okay, so hopefully this video pushed you in the right direction. Um, again, feel free to rewind and, and go back and look at anything you think will be helpful for doing the project. Um, we'll, we will continue to do some work in class, but I, there is a big push for stuff that you're gonna need to do on your own, whether it be your asynchronous day or the day when we're not meeting. All right, so folks, keep it up. Best of luck. Make sure you use those office hours and keep working at it. And remember, you can do it. Until next time, have a great one.